Thanks again for having me here. My name is Ken Lamog and I consider myself a professional dabbler. I have done various things from race car driving to beekeeping to photography, filmmaking, um, just a bunch of different things. And um, recently my day job, I guess you could say, is I have been a chief technology officer for a commercial real estate company. And at night is when I actually do my other creative stuff where I write and illustrate children's picture books and graphic novels. So I grew up in the Philippines and I went through elementary school and high school over there. And you know, about 24 years ago, the entire family picked up and moved to the US. So my parents and my siblings. And when we moved here, I was basically helping out my family, you know, try to get a job and that kind of stuff. And I would take um, various classes at the community college and learn things from books basically so it was me teaching myself and back then the internet wasn't such a big thing where you could just go on youtube and watch a lot of different things so i had to teach myself and you know that's kind of how i learned a lot of the things that i know today so my my graphic novel it's a wordless graphic novel it's called petro and the flea king and it's loosely based on a filipino folktale about the boy who basically uh goes into town and because he's a he's a naughty little boy so he broke his uh, grandmother's cooking pot so I had to go into town and um, and buy a new one and then he finds out that the town is infested with fleas so so he then tries to um, to trick the town uh, by grinding out the pot that he broke turning it into powder and then selling it to people saying hey this will kill the fleas you know so it ends up backfiring um, but in my story I basically took that same idea and kind of um, changed it a little bit and reimagined it, I guess you could say, and adding different uh, elements of uh, the Fili Filipino folk, folk tales and folklores. And it's so rich, um, the Filipino history. We have, I would consider uh, the Filipino uh, culture almost like a melting pot in that region because there's so many different countries that trade and do that kind of stuff. And I think being able to show just a little piece of our culture you know, will help a lot of people understand who we are and our beliefs and our values as well. So I think making it uh, so that it's wordless, it's something that uh, sometimes, you know, the way I look at it, sometimes the words can even be a barrier. So just making it wordless, anybody can pick up this book and they, just because of the pictures, the illustration, you can see how the story goes and people have sometimes even um, kids write their own stories or their, and their own dialogues based on the pictures. So that's truly truly awesome and uh, I just love doing stuff like that and I hope that I can continue that series as well you know it just depends on my availability my time and that kind of stuff but it's it was it was a project just that, that came from my heart I really wanted to create a story that was based on the Filipino culture and so as a, as a creative person you try to impart a piece of yourself into into your works and I hope that uh, you know people that get to read my stuff and look at my artwork artwork we'll see my personality in there we'll see part of my culture um, and you know something that they, they they can see that you know hey this this Filipino boy who grew up in the Philippines moved to America and was able to you know find work here make a lot of friends and with a lot of you know hard work and luck was able to finally fulfill his dream so I hope that uh, they see that through me or you know to some through some other person and but I think that that I hope that that inspires people out there yeah, so as, as a, somebody who wants to get into it, get into illustrating, get into writing, get into the creative field, you're not alone out there, right? So I think it is important, very critical, that you find that tribe, that community. And we have one here in town. We have multiple ones here in town that you can connect with and be part of that group. And it's, you know, it's, the group just elevates each other. Once you're in part of that group, you see how, it, how other people do it, and you can see how you can help them and how they can help you. So just being part of that community is, is truly a blessing and you know, I'm very thankful that we have that here in town. Um, one of the groups that I'm part of is called Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators and we're all volunteers, right? And we help people who are aspiring authors and illustrators you know, through the path of getting their work published. So we, we're here and you know, we're open to, to anybody who wants to join. So I think you, you as somebody who is aspiring to do that, you can look into that Kind of uh, situation as well as far as being able to balance your work life i think it's it's one of those things that's different for each pe each person and um i was lucky enough that like i said my work is very understanding of this 
and you know it's it's part of the the grind that we have to go through but I think as long as you enjoy what you're doing you know take it at your own pace and develop yourself and you know you'll slowly get better better and you'll slowly get there